Hello, everyone, and welcome to our podcast. This is JB. And I'm Chandler, and this is the Unbiased Hard Take. And on today's Unbiased Hard Take, me and JB, as always, are going to wrap up week 13 in the NFL. And what a glorious week it was. JB, what's one game you want to talk about from week 13? Well... Oh, well, there's quite a few that were actually pretty good. Uh, Tennessee fought back yes. with, or Indianapolis fought back with Tennessee. Um, we could talk. I could talk about the Chargers. <laughs> they had oh, apparently they had triple. They had the triple A's in their system and not a car battery like they normally should because they have very low voltage in their team anymore because who puts up six points against New England? The sad um, part is they won. They won, but it doesn't feel like they won. Nope. I mean, I could. I could, we, we could. I know you're probably going to talk about the Green Bay game. Oh, of course I am. You already know I am. I could, we could we could talk about the since I could talk about the Cincinnati and Jacksonville game, but that was crazy. That was crazy, but I'm wanting to talk about the Steelers and the Cardinals game. <laughs> the floor is yours. Well. I think that the the two delays that we had, I think that kind of ruined our momentum. So for so say, um, Kenny, but Kenny Pickett kind of left early in the game because due to a ankle injury, and we had to work with Mitch Trubisky. I still Mitchburg. don't. Everyone all. Pittsburgh fans were happy about him. I was not. Uh, he left Chicago for a reason, and with all the other teams that he was a backup for, and I think it was it was stupid. He should have stayed in Buffalo. But, but the but yeah, it was it was a horrible horrible game for. On our offense and defense aside, uh, Tomlin did say in his pet the his press conference that it's we played like a JV football team, in which we did. Too many disciplines, too many turnovers. Um, that uh, fumble that Mr. Bisky got, um, Mason Cole was a that was a horrible snap to begin with. Um, it was just it lousy. We play like really lousy. Um, it was not Pittsburgh football that we are not normally with. Um, I mean, Mr. Bisky did throw a touchdown, so that was, you know, okay. And then with, with those three, I'm never going to call him that ever again. He's he's dead to me. He will always be dead to me. He's I, I still feel like he's not part of the team. He, we should have let him go when he wanted to. When he wanted to be let go, but yeah, too too many turnovers. Um, we literally look like a JV football team. Um, it, it, it was just ugly football, ugly football. So I mean, I'll, I'll say it at that. Um, even though we definitely, definitely should have won. Um, but yeah, we just we just played horrible with lack of lack of defense. Uh, James Conner basically ran us ran us over with his uh, twenty five carries, hundred five yards, and his two touchdowns. Kyler Murray only threw thirteen for twenty three and only one hundred forty five yards again, one touchdown. Um, I mean, we didn't throw the ball as much, probably because I think it was raining, but it's. It was, it was super windy. Yeah. Which I, I it was extremely windy. 
which I don't even get, but I mean, whatever. I mean, you know, it's while looking at the box score, Mr. Trubisky did have, excuse me, of 104.3. So it was good. It was good. Uh, he went 11 for 17, 117 yards and what touchdown. But he did have that one turnover with that um, horrible snap that he did. Um, but yeah, with all the injuries that we had, uh, Mika Fitzpatrick, Patrick, Mika Fitzpatrick, um, apparently he left the game for a little bit because uh, I think he broke a finger or something. But he got it, he got it bandaged up and came back and finished the game. So. I mean, he didn't want to be out again just for another another injury that he just came back off of. Um, so he wanted to play, so that's if that's a tough mentality, I don't know what is. But yeah. Just poor lack of effort. Um I know probably I hope I hope to God that that whole entire team is going to get a whole lot of discipline. It's just for the lack of lack of confidence and it's just everything in general. That's all I got to say about well, it. Well, while you had a pessimistic take, and I don't blame you, if I was a Steelers fan, I would have too. However, I am going to talk about the game of the week. That being the Green Bay Packers defeating the Kansas City Chiefs by eight points on primetime Sunday night at Lambeau Field in Green Bay, Wisconsin. As you can see, I am wearing my cheese head, one of the most iconic sports items there is. Terrible Tau also was willing to be mentioned as well. I think those are probably your top two. You can debate it all day which one's better, but I think that's the top two. Anyway, so I'm going to talk about that game a little bit on a more negative side to start. Christian Watson did have a hamstring injury. He's really came into a great player these last couple of weeks and really started to develop. He's, he's a speedster. He had a hamstring injury. Matt LaFleur said no update at this time. So we'll kind of see with that. Christian Watson's a gr really good wide receiver, but he has injury history. So we'll see where that kind of leads. Um, but with that, that's all the negative I have for this game. I am probably like one of the only people in the world who actually picked Green Bay to win this game. Every analysis I see in the entire Sunday Night Football crew picked Kansas City. No one was picking Green Bay, and if they were, it was like one person out of ten. No one picked Green Bay. No one did. No one thought they had a chance. Mm -mm. And now your Green Bay Packers are six and six on the season, and currently are the seventh seed in the playoffs. The season ends today. Green Bay's in the playoffs. Reason for that is is because they've already beaten the Rams once, so they have the tiebreaker, and with that, Seattle behind them as well. Green Bay's remaining schedule, the New York Giants, the w. Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Tampa, possibly Tampa Bay, yeah, possibly, Carolina, W, Minnesota, and Chicago. Minnesota will probably be a di iffy, and Chicago is definitely a W. My point exactly. We have... We just went through our hardest stretch, Chargers, Lions, Chiefs. And we won all three games. Now, we can't take the foot off the gas because the opponents get easier. Pittsburgh found that out this week. The NFL, anything can happen. These guys are professionals for a reason. So let's not assume Green Bay's going to win all these games. But our schedule definitely shows that we're, I mean, the odds say, analytics say we'll be a playoff team because Seattle's schedule is San Francisco, Philly, Tennessee, Pittsburgh, Arizona, that's not the easiest schedule. Green Bay's is easier. Then you have the Rams, Baltimore, the Saints, the Commanders, and the Giants. So that's sort of easy too, minus Baltimore and maybe, maybe the Saints, depending if they show up to play, which they recently have not, because Derek Carr is extremely overrated. I'll get into that later. So you look, Green Bay, their hardest stretch is over. They went three and zero. Jordan Love for the year, 24 touchdowns, 10 turnovers, 90.2 QBR, 3,097 total yards. Matt LaFleur is 16-0 now in the month of December as the Packers head coach. 
Things are starting to look up really good. Me and you had Green Bay as our seven seed before the season started. Y'all don't believe us? Go back and check. We we won't do the research for you. It's it's in our previous videos. Go check that out. So, yep. Had you told me after the Pittsburgh game that we would be a playoff team after this three game stretch, I'd have laughed at you. And that's why I said I made that mistake, and I will not pick against Green Bay until they lose again. Even if we make the playoffs. Ooh. 100%. Jordan Love is that dude. He went out there and out Patrick Mahomes. He had less turnovers. He had more touchdown passes. He had more yards. And he defeated a two-time Super Bowl champion on primetime in Lambeau. Mm-mm-mm. Jordan Love has arrived. He is here now. That's all I have. Okay. With that, me and JB are going to switch over from week 13 to week 14, and hopefully the Packers' luck continues in week 14. We shall see. However, we will start with Thursday night football. We've got the New England Patriots at the Pittsburgh Steelers. Mitchburg. To be noted, Kenny Pickett is to have ankle surgery. The Steelers, per Mike Tomlin, are not going to likely put him on IR, but he will likely miss two to four weeks. Yep. So not um, some good news. Yeah, not not good news for us, but I mean, I did see today that we did sign Tracy McSorley to our practice squad. Um, so I mean, he's Tracy McSorley is a good scrapper. Um, I don't know if you guys, some of you guys might have heard of him. Some of you might have not. Um, he got pretty. His he did pretty good. Um, again, on his last uh, preseason game, I think it was with the Arizona Cardinals. Um, he basically he basically almost threw. I think he did. I think he threw three touchdowns that game in the preseason, and he rushed. I think he rushed one in. I he threw yeah, it was two touchdowns yeah. and yeah. He he did he played really good in his, his last game, but I think he went to the um I think he went overseas, I do believe. I'm not hundred percent sure. I never I I don't really don't follow Trace McSorley um that well. But we did sign him and he I feel like he is a pretty good uh player. Hopefully he can take uh Mitch Trubisky's spot and not not doing, doing, I don't have to see his Trubis, or Miss Trubisky's, but again, um, but for this, I am probably going to pick the Pittsburgh Steelers, even though it is a short week for us. Um, and I do, and I do believe what everyone else is saying. That that everyone is holding TJ Watt, and they're calling it a hack a shack NFL style, and basically they're just holding him. Basically, every play, and they're not not they're not calling it, and I, I think it's stupid. Right. I, it's they they if they should call it for everybody else, call it for him too, and it, it's it's not. It's like if he if he if he doesn't get get held every game, he's he's better than his brother, hands down. Because there are times where he or T, or JJ Watt got didn't get hold sometimes, and he still still didn't make a, or he made plays, but but TJ Watt he oh yeah TJ Watt he's. I mean, if if he gets this. Um, defensive player of the year award. I do believe he will be better than his brother. No, I think he is. I think, of course, I think JJ Watt's a Hall of Famer. He had a great career with Houston. Oh, yeah. But I, I absolutely agree. TJ, I think his brother's a little better. Yep. But um, but yeah, I'm pick, I'm picking Pittsburgh. Uh, it's the way that New England played uh, last week. Uh, right now they, they're they're two and ten. I mean, it's it, it's horrible. But it's it's 
the last... I'll say, yeah, the last three games they held... They held the Colts to 10. They held the Giants to 10. And they held the Chargers to 6. But... I'm just worried that our that our offense is not going to perform as well against the um, the Patriots. I do believe it is going to uh, be a struggle. I do believe it's is not going to look pretty against uh, the Patriots. So I mean, it's going to be an ugly win, but it's probably going to be. A pretty bad, ugly win. Is I I do believe it's probably going to be, it's probably going to be a field goal game. We're not probably not going to see see the end zone. We're probably probably see the end zone probably once. But it it's, it's probably going to be mostly field goals. Do that. So give me Pittsburgh. I agree with you. I think Pittsburgh. I'm still going to say they're a playoff team. I want to see how they look against New England first. I think either way, though, I think Pittsburgh wins, not because I have faith in Mitch Trubisky, because I do not have faith in Mitch Trubisky. If you guys were playing pretty much anyone but New England, who is incompetent on offense, because you look right here, their last three games, like you said, they allowed only six points to the uh, Chargers, but they scored zero. Mm -hmm. They can't put any points on the board. Their offense... This is the worst offense we've seen in the NFL in this era in our lifetime because New England's offense is horrible. Mm -hmm. I mean, my God. Pittsburgh scored more in their game that they lost against the Cardinals than New England has scored in the last two weeks. Yep. I don't have faith in Mitch Trubisky. I don't. But Bailey Zappi was 13 for 25 for 141 yards. Washed up, Zeke Elliott had 52 yards. Ramondre Stevenson is likely out for the season now with his injury he suffered last week. And he's really their only good offensive player they've had all year long. Yep. I think New England will score three points. I think Pittsburgh scores nine. I think this is going to be, like you said, one of those games that we all want to like pour hot sauce on our eyes when it's over with. Yep. But ultimately, I'm not a man of style. The only thing that matters to me is the win. Winning. That's it. So Pittsburgh, they're in the playoff chase right now. They're a playoff team. They need a win. Mike Tomlin's an elite coach. He's a Hall of Fame coach. He's going to have them ready enough to play. He'll have Ms. Trubisky ready enough to play to beat New England. And it's in Pittsburgh. But yeah, give me Pittsburgh. Nine to three. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm going to say this. We should not fire Mike Tomlin. No, we shouldn't. Every, everyone, not. every everyone thinks mo majority of the Pittsburgh Steelers fan base wants him gone. Yes, he has made some terrible mistakes. Yes, he hasn't. We haven't went to the Super Bowl since Super Bowl forty three. I do get that. Forty five. Forty five. But we didn't won one since forty three, and that was right, right, with right. a still a team that Bill Cowher has made was made back in when he was the coach for Super Bowl forty. So most majority of those people were still on that team until they retired. Right, it was inherited. So it was so basically with him still being the coach, but. I do believe it. For us, it is a real rebuilding stage. Right after uh, Ben Roethlisberger retired, I already knew hands down it is going to be a terrible uh, few seasons, and it's going to be a rebuild year. Some, some, most of the Steelers fan base does not get that. It is a rebuild stage. We're he still has a winning record. We're still going to make the playoffs. Are we still going to be the elite team whether well, like we were back in the day no we will I don't, I don't think we never will unless we have an elite quarterback that comes in and takes over like how ben did when he was in his or in his uh rookie year when he got when hit this 
our that starting I forgot what it was who was that starting quarterback? Tommy Maddox? Cordell Stewart. I think it was Tommy Maddox. When uh Tommy Maddox. Yeah. When he hurt his ankle. And then It was. It was. Yeah. I remember now. It was. So so with that and and he's and then look how Ben was in his rookie year. It's like it's the best, probably one of one one of the best rookie seasons that the NFL has seen. Until CJ Stroud arrived. Yep, until CJ Stroud. That's why I said he's that's one of the best oh, um, QBs, and he went to the playoffs his rookie year. So. But we'll, I agree with you. We, we will never yeah. see anything like that on, but until C.J. Stroud came along. And then, but yeah. But we should not get rid of Tomlin. Because you know how many spots are open for a head coach right now? A lot. Five or seven teams that need a head coach. And they will pay pretty good money for Mike Tomlin. So with that, thing, with that, with that being said... We should never we should, for what he he did, yes, we kept Canada way too long. But yeah, that, that is was, that is a Pittsburgh Steelers culture. We stick around with the with the stuff that we have, regardless of the situation, and see if we could fix it. And for that, Matt Canada could not be fixed, so we had to let him go. So but we never fired a coach in midseason since the never. 1900s. Well, right, I'm right back in the day, right? In today's modern era, you've never fired a coach, uh, any coach of any kind, midseason. Nope. And that's stability. That's what a lot of these Steelers fans, I think, don't understand beyond you, because Packers and Steelers fans have one thing in common. We're both spoiled. We're both so used to our teams being so good and Jesus Christ, the Steelers would be in the playoffs right now if the season ended and they would have a chance to compete for a Super Bowl. That is a legitimate fact. It is. They would mm-hmm. have a chance to compete for a Super Bowl right now if the season ended. And people want him fired? Why? Why? Listen, he's never had a losing season. No. Ridiculous. Nope. Never had a losing what, what other? What other head coach... Had the most uh, winning regular seasons. Yes, even though it is not a Super Bowl, I do get that. But how many co- how many head coaches can say it's like, yeah, I have had these consecutive uh, winning seasons? No one. No one. That and Mike Tomlin has a ring. He's proven he can do it. He's proven he's capable to lead a team to a Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. He's proven he can lead a team to the playoffs. He's proven he can win ugly games, have ugly years, and still be good. So that's ridiculous. Especially Mike last, Tomlin. especially last year, still had but a winning right. season after all the stuff that happened. Yeah. So and the year before that, the and year before, the year before that, that, they went to the playoffs. Yep. And that was with a washed up Ben Roethlisberger. Mm-hmm. Was and they still went to the playoffs. Yeah, he needs. A, yeah, he he needs an extension. He needs an extension, not fired. Yeah, but I I don't think he's not going to get an. Ex- he, I think I don't I don't think he doesn't want one until he probably wins another Super Bowl. Hey, you never know. But we never know the playoffs this. Year. But yeah. That, that's all I have to speaking say. Of, speaking of coaches who should be fired, who got this game? The Tampa Bay Buccaneers at the Atlanta Falcons. I say that because Tampa Todd Bowles, he's on the hot seat. So, Yeah, Todd, Todd Bowles is... He's he's on the hot seat. But, I mean, for for majority of the games that they, they lost, it's basically a one-possession game. So yeah, absolutely. They're competitive. So I, I still believe I do believe that um that Baker Mayfield is probably not the answer, but he's good enough 
to what the market is being capable of right now. Um, right now, there's not too many quarterbacks that's on the market right now. And he's your best option. And I do believe he is one heck of a um, quarterback for him right now. Because, like I said, I if, I if, if you look at his uh, QBR and his rating and everything, and right now his completion percentage last game was almost at a 50%. So, and if you look at it, the ratings, even though, yes, his his rating against Carolina was not good, um, it was at a 68 uh, but all because of that interception that he threw. Um, but everything else was at a 93, 76, 102, and 119. And those were all... Uh, the 102 pass rating was against the Tennessee, which they won. 119, which they lost to the Texans. This was the last five games. Um, the 76 was with against the 49ers, and that was from 27. Or score was 27-14. Uh, 93.6 was against Indy, one possession game. But for them, for the majority of it all, I mean, he's on. Uh, he's doing really good right now. He's being projected to get three thousand, almost four thousand yards passing, uh, twenty six touchdowns, and eleven interceptions right now. Yeah, that's and, a good season. And with and with the rating, and with the rating is a ninety. So right now he's looking. I don't want to say like his old self, but after that surgery, I think that kind of screwed up a little bit, but he's, he's still doing good. And well, in the QBR rating, it's 19th. He He's 19th in the, in the QBR. So, so I, I still think he's good, but I mean, he's, he's not like a, Falcons head coach, but I, I do believe the Falcons head coach is going to be gone. If they win the division, he won't be. Yes, if if he they win the division. But I, he's he made I forgot the only Arthur head, Smith. Yeah, uh, I don't I don't think Smith is he's not a good coach. I mean, yeah, you've you've lost some games. It's like I mean, it's the same way as um. Uh, floral in the Buccaneers losing to one possession game so but for me I am probably going to pick Tampa Bay oh okay I like it because two games in me and you already have a different game because while me and you pick New Orleans to win the division I think we were wrong. I think the Falcons are going to win the division this year. That's a piss-ass division. Excuse my language. Not really. But the Falcons now are 6-6. Six and six. They have Desmond Ritter as their quarterback, and he is not him. Desmond Ritter is not him. Here's the no. thing. Arthur Smith has been playing well enough to at least be 500, to at least be mid, and to at least be leading their division. So I think this is obviously a big game because it's a division game. Mm-hmm. On top of that, that Tampa Bay is also creeping right behind them at 5-7. and seven. So this is a big game for the Falcons. This game's in Atlanta. This is in the ATL. The Falcons just came off a victory against the Jets, as I think both of us predicted. I know I predicted. I can't remember if you, who you had in that Atlanta game, I think. I think I had yeah, Atlanta. Yeah, you had Atlanta, well. too. We both did. We both I mean, had Atlanta. So we were right. It would be stupid if you picked the Jets. Well, it was close because it was 13-8. to eight. And Desmond Ritter outperformed Tim Boyle, barely, which is an embarrassment. But the Falcons are... Boyle! The Falcons are... They're also good at winning ugly games. They grind it out. I think this is a Tampa Bay team they'll be able to grind it out against. Mike Evans, yes, he... He's a baller. Mike Evans is a baller. In our, mm-hmm. Like I said last week, in our personal fantasy league, everyone flamed me for drafting him. And I am now number one in our friends league. And Mike Evans just had 
Seven catches, 162 yards, and a touchdown. He already has over 1,000 yards, which is more than Jamar Chase, which is more than Devontae Adams. He is a top receiver. Unfortunately for them, it's not coming to a lot of wins. You are what your record says you are. They barely beat the 1-11 Panthers by three points. You have to do a little better than that to beat the Falcons. I think the Falcons win an ugly football game. Ooh. All right. Here's one I think we'll be on the same page on, though. The L.A. Rams at the Baltimore Ravens. Oh, even though last week the Rams killed, and I mean killed, the Browns. I was wrong. I even though Joe Flacco came back, he he did a, he did a good game. He he didn't he did an okay. He it was okay. Two touchdowns, one interception. Um rating was 110. Oh no, that was never mind. I was looking at Matthew Stafford. But I mean he did throw for two touchdowns, one interception. Uh Joel Flacco with the rating of 75, probably because of that interception. And probably because of the um catch and attempts that he did he went 23 for 44 uh 254 yards and like i said two touchdowns and one interception but that team in general the browns defense sucked yeah (laughs) and i want to say and i want to say one thing and one thing only where is Miles Garrett in that game? Where was he, Browns fans? Oh, wait. Was he injured? No. Was he on the field and did absolutely nothing? Yes. My Come on. And you and you say that he is the best. He's he is he is a defensive player of the year candidate. Well, honestly, if you're a defensive player of the year candidate, you should be on. You should have at least done something. He didn't even get a tackle. He didn't even he didn't even get a sack. He didn't get nothing. No QB hits, nothing. Unless he was injured, and then I can't see that. I could probably see it. But as far as I know, he was nowhere to be found. So stop your TJ Watt versus uh, Miles Garrett because it's irrelevant. Just admit it. Just a minute, Browns fans. TJ Watt. Miles Garrett. So, with that being said, my little rant. Um, but yeah, the Rams basically killed the, the Cleveland Browns. Um, Matthew Stafford looked like his old self. Um Williams had had a pretty decent game on the run game. Uh, 21 carries for 88 yards and one touchdown. And Puka, four catches, 105 yards, and one touchdown. Same thing, or not the same thing, but Demarcus Robinson, four catches, 55 yards, and one touchdown. And Cooper Cup also caught one for, he had caught six for 39. But Puka... He's, he's a, he's, he's a little scrapper. I mean, he can, he, he, he picks his days of what he wanted, but, but for this game, I'm probably, I forget who they're playing. Hold on. Let me just go back to all my tabs here. Baltimore. 
See, Baltimore is probably one of the better teams, in my opinion. Uh, defense, hands down. Also, also defense and offense both. Um, I don't think they don't. I don't think they don't have an answer for Lamar. Um. So yeah, give me. I'm I'm going to go with the Rams on this one. The Rams? No, not the Rams. I get another blooper. Uh, Baltimore. Blooper. But I'm, right. I'm 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 going to go with Baltimore. They they don't. I don't think they don't have an answer for Lamar, or basically anybody on that defense. Um. So yeah, give me. Yeah. Give me Baltimore. I 100% agree with you that Baltimore will win this game. And I'm going to give the Rams some credit because they haven't lost a game since the Green Bay game. And they have since beaten Seattle by one point. They scored 17-16. And then in the last two games, they've scored over 35 points. So they're starting to wide it up again. So I'm going to give the Rams some credit. Three-game winning streak. They've caught themselves right back in the playoff picture as well. But you look, I think Baltimore's is too good. Baltimore's also coming off of a bye week with extra rest, and they're a team that's known to get injured, so they've had a chance to get healthy a little bit. They're one of the top contending teams in the AFC. Lamar Jackson's a Pro Bowl quarterback. He's a league MVP previously. Yeah, I mean, Baltimore's going to win this game. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I'd, I believe so. I think a lot of it has to do with they're also coming off the bye week. Mm-hmm. That's a big thing in football, to be able to rest, especially 14 games into the season. You're tired. Everyone's hurt. Everyone's hurt at this point. Someone, every player in the league has some sort of ache or pain. So to be able to get that extra rest, the Rams did not. Baltimore's more talented anyway. So with that, give me Baltimore. Yep. All right. Ooh, NFC North Clash. The Detroit Lions or the shit Chicago Bears. <laughs> Detroit. Next, next team. There's, there's really, there's, there's nothing to say. Um, like I said, that one game that you had, that game-winning drive, um, with that field goal that Justin Fields threw, it was, it was a really nice read. It was a nice throw. Um, to win over the. Minnesota, but, but yeah, that is probably the only thing you're probably going to do good for the rest of your season, for the rest of the season, um, it was, like I said, it was, it was a horrible game all around for, for both teams, but, but yeah, give me, give me the Lions. I 100% agree with you, and I'll say this about the Lions. Yes, I think they're going to win the NFC North for the first time since the NFC North existed. (laughs) It's funny, because the last time that pathetic organization won the NFC North, it wasn't even the NFC North, it was the NFC Central. The Indianapolis Colts have won the NFC North slash Central, whatever you want to call it, more recently than the Detroit Lions. The NFL was realigned since then. That's how bad they've sucked. Which makes mm-hmm. my soul happy because I hate the Lions. I hate them with everything. However, they are much better than the Bears. On a real note, I'm, I'll stop bashing on Detroit fans here, but on a real note, Chicago, you look, they are, yeah, they're coming off of a bye week, but Justin Fields for the season, 12 touchdowns, 6 interceptions. You look at that Vikings game, they wouldn't let him loose. You watch Jordan Love. They're letting him loose. They're throwing deep balls. They're taking risks. They're, they're throwing it down the field. With Justin mm-hmm. Fields, you can tell they don't trust him. It's all dink and dunk. Let's do a read option. Let's have him scramble. Let's hand the ball. You know what I mean? It's never down the field throws. He he can't read the defense. We've been saying this since the offseason. The Lions, yes, I'm slightly concerned because they're starting to kind of play a little sloppy. Yeah, they pulled the Saints game off, but they kind of blew a lead there for a minute. They let the Saints back in the game. So they're kind of playing inconsistent football. They had a fumbled snap the first play of the game. So they're, they need to watch themselves, especially around playoff time, or they'll want to get themselves bounced out. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, Detroit's, be, Detroit's definitely good enough, even on a bad day, to beat Chicago. They just did it with multiple turnovers, and they still beat Chicago. 
a few weeks ago. Mm-hmm. So they're going to be able to do it again. Give me Detroit. But yeah. And also adding up, it's like even though Justin Fields had one drive that put them in field goal position. And yes, that was one deep ball that he basically overthrew. DJ Moore had to yeah. dive for that ball. So with that being said, that's that's all I have to say. I'm I'm sorry, Bears fans, but you're you're trash. Uh you will always be trash. Um it's unless you get rid of well, whoever you have as coach, or GM, or whatever. Um, get rid of them. Uh, get rid of Justin Fields. Uh, tank the rest of these games, and hopefully you get. Oh, I mean, well, you get you get the fir- first pick anyways because you got that trade. Regardless of uh, what what you have, so, and you thought you're gonna do good, so you. But regardless, I think you should get a quarterback. Get Caleb Williams. They should because they don't have one. Nope. Get Caleb, Caleb Williams. Williams is not it. Just, just do no. what, just, just do what the Tennessee Titans did. No, 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 actually, actually, no. I think you're right. I think Chicago should draft Caleb Williams because I think he's going to suck. We'll get into that on a different day. But yeah. But yeah, draft your quarterback, draft another quarterback, and either put... Watch him. And watch him suck, too, because all Bears quarterbacks suck. And they always will. Ditto everything JB said. Yep. Moving forward, our home state. Who do you got? The Indianapolis Colts at the... Off my paper there, dang. At the Cincinnati Bengals. Ooh, it is home for the Bengals. Yes, sir. I'm probably going to pick. Well, Colts are on fire. I'll, I'll, I'll say that. But Browning last game, he looked good. He did. He, he, he did. looked. He looked good. Two total touchdowns. Um, he went 32 for 37, um, 354 yards and a rating of 115.5. Um, even though Trevor Lawrence came down with a injury closer to the end of the game or into the fourth quarter, uh, CJ, uh, Bradford, uh, did come in and come with it with his place. Um, even though he missed one pass for 63 yards, but it was not enough because the game ended in overtime. Um, but yeah, but it was, that game was good. If Trevor, honestly, if Trevor Lawrence did not get hurt, I do believe, uh, Jacksonville would have won. Uh, but that, that drive that they had, which was on. I think it was on their own. F- I think it was on like. I'm trying to think before without even looking. I gotta look. I want to say there was they're in their own uh, field goal or like not even a field goal range, but so yeah, they're they were on their on their own. Uh, 41 yard line. So. So. But it was. All in all, it was a good game. Um. Oh, cramp. Hold on. <laughs> but all in all, it was a good game. But honestly, I am probably going to pick Indy. Because they are on fire. With on what how they are playing right now. Um, even though the matchup predictors, as I seen, which on ESPN, they have the Bengals winning, but not by much. But I am going to say this though: 
The Colts, they are on fire. They're on a four-game winning streak. They came back and beat the Titans in overtime. They beat the Buccaneers. They came back and won that game. Uh, they barely beat the uh, Patriots. And I, w- I don't want to say that they barely won against Panther the Panthers. But they were uh, it was a two-possession game. Right. So... So with that being said, it's it's I don't think it's going to be they're they're going to fight back. The I think the uh, Bengals are going to come up and win, or not win, but they're going to get put the lead up and probably once in the second half the Colts are going to come back and they're going to win. That's like how they always been the past four games. So yeah, give give me the Colts. Uh, Minshew is on a tear. Um, the the be, probably the best backup quarterback in the NFL, in my opinion. Absolutely as, as is the way as the way that they're as the Colts is playing right now. It's it's looking good for them. So yeah, give give me the Colts on this one. I think we might have to reevaluate because the Colts are a playoff team right now. And they're the sixth seed. If the season were to end right now, they'd be in. So you look, like you said, I mean, these last four games are on fire. They're finding ways to win football games. They're on their backup quarterback. You know, in the NFL, most time you go to your backup quarterback, your season's over. It is. It, it, at most time, you're like, oh, it's over. Yep. And Anthony Richardson, I think, is the future of the Colts. Go check our pre-draft coverage for that. I think he's the best quarterback in this draft class. It's unfortunate he got injured. But you look, they did all but without Jonathan Taylor. They beat Tennessee at Tennessee. Zach yeah. Moss came in there at 51 yards. Michael Pittman, we said last week, one of the most underrated receivers. 11 catches, 105 yards, one touchdown. Gardner Minshew, over 300 passing yards, two touchdowns, both in the air. Gardner Minshew is absolutely the best backup quarterback in the league. But I think the Colts are this good because of Shane Steichen. Even Philadelphia's offense has not looked the same since Shane Steichen left. Yes, Philly is still an elite team. But their offense is not as good. It's not. It's still good. It's good. It's not great. I guess is what I'm saying. It was great. Now it's just good. And Shane Steichen goes in there and is now making like Gardner Minshew look like a Pro Bowl quarterback. It's not mm-hmm. a coincidence. Coaching matters in the NFL. And Cincinnati, I want to give them credit. They went out there and beat Jacksonville when I did not think they were going to. Again, I think Lawrence's injury had something to do with that. But they still put up 34 points with their backup and won the game. Yep. So credit to Cincinnati. They're 6-6, six and six, one game out of the playoffs. But I still think their season's over. I think the Colts are, yeah, the Colts are going to put Cincinnati back on their place. Yep. Give, me the, give me the Colts. Ah, we're going to stay in the same division. The Jacksonville Jaguars at the Cleveland Browns. This is a big game because Cleveland needs to bounce back. If they don't, they're hurting. And for this game, hold on, I, I, the cramp is back again, and I am going to stand up for this one. Give me one minute. If you can go ahead and you start it off, I'm going to get this cramp out of the way. Ah, uh, yes. Age is starting to show, my friend. Age is starting to show. The Dirty 30 is approaching. With that, I think Jackson, <laughs> Jacksonville wins this game. I mean, of course, the status of Trevor Lawrence has, uh, is going to kind of put things in perspective. But with Cleveland right now, they are not playing good football right now. They were winning games without Deshaun Watson before. So I don't really know what's happening. Maybe the Browns are always going to be the Browns and find a way to screw it up. We said that last week. They've done it multiple times, and they are on a losing streak now. So you look, they have put Joe Flacco out there, who, yes, did have a solid performance, but dude's washed up. Yeah, he did have two touchdowns. He threw the interception, 254 yards, but they got obliterated by an average Rams team. Jacksonville's not an average team. If Trevor Lawrence plays, I think the Jaguars win this game by a lot. He has a high right ankle sprain. And, uh, it says, per Tom Pelosorio, initial diagnosis for Trevor Lawrence is an ankle sprain. He'll have an MRI on Tuesday, so we'll know more. So a status up in the air. Either way, this will be a game of backup quarterbacks. With that, I, I think Jacksonville is going to win this game either way. I think it'll be a little a lot closer. It can really go either way if Lawrence does not play. But if he does play, they'll obliterate Cleveland. 
So give me Jacksonville. Either way, give me Jacksonville. Hey, he's back. I am back for a little bit, but I am going to be standing for the remain probably the remainder of my this podcast. So maybe JB needs an MRI. I probably do. I don't know, but I'm going to. Depending on the Trevor Lawrence uh, injury, um, this will probably be hands down going to be going to the Jacksonville. But with that being said, I don't know about his. Even though he it is pointed out, it is a high ankle sprain. Um, I'm reading the um, report right now. He suffered a high ankle sprain against the Cincinnati Bengals on Monday night, but escaped further uh, damage. So that's what uh, Doug Pierce said on Tuesday. Uh, The Jaguars will evaluate uh, Lawrence later in the week, but he would not completely rule out possibly Lawrence playing Sunday. So it is a... um, I was, I was probably going to be a 50-50 for the uh, Jacksonville Jaguars. Um, but if they're going to evaluate him and he's it's still going to be looking good for him, it's probably going I'm probably going to pick the Jacksonville Jaguars on this game. I agree. I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt, with or without Lawrence. Yep, I, I do agree too. It's it's just for the fact that the yeah the Jacksonville Jaguars are more disciplined. They are more um, athletic than what the Browns are. So, give me Jacksonville. We agree. However, this one, that was a hard game for me to pick. Because of the Lawrence status. Yep. This one, however, will not be hard for me to pick. The Carolina Panthers at the New Orleans Saints. Oh, this was an easy one. Uh, give me the New Orleans Saints. Even though they Carolina does have a the coaching problem, they've always had the coaching problem. Um, they always have the quarterback problem. Um, they just have the lack of discipline. In any of their feel, in any where they're at, offense and defense. So for that, give me the New Orleans Saints because they are a little bit more disciplined. Um, they have a lot more veteran staff on on that team, so they could they know how to work with the um, what they have. So yeah, give me give me the New England or the New Orleans Saints. I agree. However, it is to be noted that Derek Carr is in concussion protocol for the second time this season and had a rib injury as well. So I would, if I was a betting man, Jameis Winston will probably be the quarterback. But I don't think that matters because Jameis Winston at one point had over 30 touchdowns and led the NFL in passing yards for Mm -hmm. an entire season. That's hard to do. Now, Jameis's problem is, I call it the the Jameis train. Choo-choo! Because you're going to get you a lot of yards, you'll get you some touchdowns, but you're going to get you a lot of interceptions too. So with that, Jameis isn't afraid to let it fly. So let's say Jameis does so even a couple interceptions. I think they're going to still be enough to beat Carolina because Carolina, I mean this. I meant what I said last week when I said I don't think they win another game. And they don't even have their number one pick. So they're not going to be able to get any better in the first round either. Bryce Young does not look like that dude. They've already fired Frank Reich, who drafted Bryce Young. So it's a clown show in Carolina. They've fired everybody. They're not giving any coaches a chance to actually fix the mess. They're giving them 11 games and going, oh, you couldn't pull off a miracle. You're fired. Ignorant ownership, hot-headed ownership, no head coach right now. Quarterback, rookie quarterback who's first overall drafted, who's spiraling out of control right now, not playing well. The Saints win based on how bad Carolina truly is. I agree. Ooh, here's one. The Houston Texans, our favorite rookie quarterback, or the New York Jets. Boyle. J-E-T-S. 
you suck. Lose, suck, suck. lose, lose. Um, so, there is rumors... Which I don't understand why. But earlier today, Aaron Rodgers defends Zach Wilson against leaks. So Aaron Rodgers is defending his uh, team. I wish that is no um I want. I want to I mean, say it's, it's, it's it's his team. He he did it when on his last day when he was a Packer. He he defended the Packers organization. He def, he defended everyone before he left. I never said no bad words to anybody. Um, but he he's basically quoted. So I'm I'm just gonna read the a little this little this part of the um article that he kind of said. Uh, let's see, New York Jets quarterback Aaron Rodgers did didn't hold back. Not only was he upset by the published report that he believes unfairly paints teammate Zach Wilson as a kid quitting on the team, but he blasted the organization for uh chicken crap leaks to the media and he also uh, stated that that's a problem with the organization and that he's all said that all on the pack mackie show which he did say more i um, if you really want to look into the uh the clip or watch the pack mackie show on his youtube and but yeah um we don't know when Aaron Rodgers is coming back. He probably wants to come back, but I don't think he should. I think he should just uh, air it or leave it to rest for the remainder of the season. But he is not walking around with a boot. He is walking on his own. He is walking on his own manpower. Um, but for that being said, I'm going to pick Houston. Too much uh, high power yeah, offense. Houston has a high power offense. Um, I really didn't. We I. I didn't think that the. Um, Houston was not going to be do good this year, but I stand corrected. Even though yes, it is week fourteen, they are. Legit. Seven seven and five with, what, that team has. And what defense they have. It is looking... They are looking really good right now. Um, but yeah, with that being said... With that young of a team being 7-5... and five, Being number one in their division... And having a playoff spot with a rookie quarterback... That has probably one of the best... Um, seasons that a rookie quarterback has ever seen oh no they're not leading the division they are one game behind they are one game behind they are in tied for, for second they're they are tied for second for against indy so i i do believe they are that this is a playoff team for sure um i do believe that they're gonna go far if they just keep the same team that they have and but keep adding positions and keep adding or add a few veterans here and there but with that being said yeah give me give me houston on this one i agree and the reason i said Boyle, the jets waved tim Boyle today and they signed brett ripen for those who don't know brett ripen was the quarterback who started for the rams against the packers and he looked absolutely abysmal so really they're truly their options i think they still have trevor Simeon on the roster don't quote me on that and they have Brett Ripon and Zach Wilson. So those options are not good. Let's be honest. The Jets should not have been Zach Wilson anyway. He's easily their best choice. We all seen how Tim Boyle looked. Why crap. But you look, Houston's way too powerful. They're way too powerful on offense. Brown at receiver looks absolutely outstanding. C.J. Stroud's on pace to lead the league in passing yards. First rookie quarterback to do that since before 1950. So that would be an amazing feat. 
Like I said, Houston's a playoff team right now. The Jets are spiraling. Jets just lost the Falcons 13-8 at, at New York. This game right here, I don't think this will be close. I think it's going to be a long day for Jets fans. Give me Houston, even though I'll, I'll leave it on this. Tank Dell, who I've been high on all season long, who I had to teach you about, he did have a season-ending injury. Now, however, the dude's the dude's uh, very he's small for receiver. He's he under six foot. And he's kind of skinny. And why you have him blocking like that on the goal line, to where he he's he's in there with the big boys, that was stupid. I don't like that call. You don't have your small receiver block like that. Obviously, now you see why because he has a season-ending injury. So unfortunate for him. He's a good playmaker, but they still have enough playmakers. Brown at receiver is good enough. I mean, Houston. Yep. And yes, uh, Brett Raven is still on the roster for the New York Jets. Good deal. All right. Who we got? The Minnesota Vikings? Or the Oakland? Oh, wow. Jesus, Mother of Mary. Or the Vegas Raiders? It'll always be Oakland in my heart. Yep. Good old Oakland. Um. This one is probably going to be a pretty tough one. Um, with that performance of what the Vikings the Vikings had last game against the Bears, um, it was a like I said, it was an ugly game. It was a ugly game for my boy. Joshua Dobbs, the astronaut. Um, but I don't, I don't think that that was just one game. I mean, I don't know what to say. Really, both teams, offense-wise, are atrocious. Um, still no Justin Jefferson. But... And then we have to look at the Raiders. I mean, they they still both with our guy, Aiden O'Connell, QB from Purdue. Well, we're up. Well, we're up. Um, he's he's looking good. I mean, he's is looking like he never left. Um, even though against the Chiefs, he did he did throw for one touchdown. He went 23 for 33, 240 yards, and one touchdown against Kansas City. But, like I said, Kansas City is too much of a powerhouse to even play horrible, even though I wouldn't say they played horrible against the Packers. They still had a pretty good game. But... But well, I, I did just see that Justin Jefferson is questionable, so he might play this game. Um, as I said, he might play. So I'm probably going to go with the Minnesota on this game. Even though they had a, a struggle last week, or not last week, but the week before, because they were on the bye week last week. Um, right. So, yeah. I think they got plenty of time to actually deal with their situation. And, yeah, give me Minnesota. And I, and I my leg cramp is gone now, and I can sit down. So, take it away. Yay! However, I agree. I think Minnesota wins this football game. I think... You look, Justin Jefferson is questionable. However, I've seen reports from Sports Illustrated that he's expected to play. So, we'll see. The Vikings coach, Kevin O'Connell, who threw his quarterback under the bus instead of taking responsibility as a head coach should for the loss against the Bears, which is bullshit. I'll say that. Lost a lot of respect. I have no respect for Kevin O'Connell now. You don't throw your quarterback under the bus like that. But you look, they haven't named a starting quarterback yet because Kevin O'Connell's too much of a chicken shit to take accountability. But yep. I think with Jefferson more than likely looking like he's going to play, the Raiders and the Vikings are both coming off bye weeks, so they've both had some time to rest. I think Minnesota is just a little more of a competitive team. They went on that winning streak that people were very surprised with. I think they'll be able to they'll be able to muster up enough to beat the Raiders. 
as much as I hate to say it, because Minnesota loss would absolutely help Green Bay's playoff chances. But I'm I I can't be biased here. I think Minnesota wins. Ooh, I agree. This is a big one too for Green Bay's playoffs. The Seattle Seahawks at the San Francisco 49ers. Even though last week Seahawks did put up a good fight against the Dallas. They did. Um, they did. DK had an amazing game. Oh, yeah. He, oh, fantasy owners feasted. Oh, yeah, he did. And thank you, DK, for putting up those amazing numbers. Even though I still probably lost, I did. But... San Francisco, they basically destroyed the Philadelphia. They did. So, for me, for this game, I don't think San Francisco is not going to stop. They're on a four-game winning streak, and I don't think they're not they're not planning to slow down because the past four games, they went 34-3, four, Against the Jaguars, uh, the Buccaneers are twenty-seven fourteen. Seahawks thirty-one thirteen, and the Eagles forty-two nineteen. And I do believe it's going to be the exact same as the way he they played the Seahawks the first time, which was thirty-one thirteen. So yeah, give me the San Francisco Forty Niners. I absolutely agree with you. I'm going to beat a dead horse. I say this every week, and I'm going to say it again. The Niners are my Super Bowl pick. There's a reason for that. When healthy, they're easily the most talented team in the NFL, even though they are missing their star safety. So with that being said, I mean, you got C-Mac, who in my opinion is an MVP candidate. However, if I'm if, right now, I'd, I'd give the MVP to Tyreek Hill, personally. That's, just, that's off topic. Anyway, San Francisco, we both had San Francisco last week, so the unbiased knows what they're talking about. However... I don't think either one of us thought it would be that score, a 42 to 19. I thought it'd be close. I said last week, I thought it'd be a close game, but I had San yep. Francisco winning. It was not close. The Niners went in there wanting revenge from that NFC Championship game, and they got it. Brock Purdy, 314 yards, four touchdowns. Matt McCaffrey, 93 rushing uh, rushing yards, one touchdown. Debo lit it up. George Kittle, 68 yards. IU got in the end zone. They just got too many weapons. This is mm-hmm. too much. Yes, Seattle looked good against the Cowboys, but they lost. Yeah, Geno had three touchdowns, one interception, 334 yards. DK, three touchdowns, 134. But none of it matters because they lost. They're 6-6 six and six right now. I think Seattle may miss the playoffs now because, I mean, I'm looking at their schedule, like I said earlier, San Francisco, Philadelphia, and they also got Pittsburgh in there. That's not easy. So with that, this game's also in San Francisco. Give me the Niners. Okay, this is a good. This is a big game too. The Buffalo Bills at the Kansas City Chiefs. Mm. The struggling Bills are the powerhouse. Kansas City Chiefs. I'm probably gonna go with the Chiefs on this game. Just for even though they came off with a horrible loss against the Packers. Um, I didn't think it was horrible. (laughs) Even though the Kansas City did play a horrible game defense-wise, because if we look at that game, even though Patrick Mahomes did throw one touchdown and one interception, um... But with his rating, yes, it was at a seventy-nine. He got sacked three times. He went, but he went twenty-one, thirty-three, two hundred ten yards, one touchdown, and one interception. But even though the run game still looked tough, um, Isaiah, Isaiah Pistachio, uh, he got eighteen, uh, had eighteen carries, hundred ten yards, and one interception. And yes, I did. It's Pacheco. 
I know. <laughs> but I like saying pista- pistachio. Because if you take a quick glance, it looks like pistachio. Oh, it does. And he's and he's very work today. and he's very small. He's very short. Because he's five ten. Pistachios at work. Yeah, he, he's he's five ten, two hundred sixteen pounds. So. So yeah, I mean the run game looked really good. So. But, with all that, I think Kansas City is trying to be revenge, and they're, and they still want to make a point that Kansas City owns the Buffalo Bills, even if it's a coin flip. I do believe Kansas yeah. City is going to come back into town and take care of business against the Buffalo Bills. I absolutely agree. I do want to make a side point here. It's not be a little biased of me, but you look. Oh no, Jordan Love has more total touchdowns than Pat Mahomes does, and the same amount of turnovers. Oh, amazing, isn't it? I'll leave that. I'll leave that stat by itself. So, you look at the Chiefs. Yeah, they came off an a, a ugly loss for them against the Packers. Their defense, who is a very good defense, Chiefs have a good defense. Chris Jones, a great player, good defense. They they couldn't stop them. Jordan Love was throwing dimes out there. I think, like I said last week, I think with the Packers-Detroit game, that was more about Green Bay arriving than it was about Detroit. Same thing Mm -hmm. here with the Chiefs. I think it's more about how good Green Bay was rather than how bad Kansas City is. The issue is, is they finally missed Tyreek Hill. The Chiefs are realizing that you cannot not have a good receiver because Marquez Valdez-Stantling is dropping balls left and right, just like he did in Green Bay. They don't have a true receiver. But with that, I, I think Kansas City coming off that loss is going to be pissed off. They're coming out. I, I think they're going to be able to beat a Buffalo Bills team who can't finish games. Because you look Kansas City, they had, they had a Hail Mary attempt at the end to kind of had a chance to tie it. Because they were only down by eight points. That's a one possession. Touchdown with a two-point conversion. So they had a chance at the end, even after how badly they played. So with that, I think Kansas City is going to be able to win a good game a close game, but Buffalo can't finish. They choke. They can't do it. Josh Allen is a very good quarterback. He's elite, but the Buffalo Bills can't finish. Give me, even though they're off the bye week, give me Kansas City. Ah, my favorite, favorite time of the week. The Denver Broncos at the Los Angeles Chargers. Oh, man. Even though the Broncos did lose against the Texans, but it was a very, really close game. Even though Russell Wilson did not look, finally did not look like his normal self, he threw one touchdown and three interceptions. Right now he is looking back against the excuse me, the Houston Texans game. He did look like his old self because he went 15 for 26, 186 yards, and, well, two total, two total touchdowns. He did rush one in and three interceptions. But with the QB or QBR, it was at 20.4 and the rating at 53.2. Ouch. Even Davis Mills had a better QBR rating than he did, even though he threw one pass. What a shame. But I do believe he is going to bounce back. Russell Wilson and the Denver Broncos are going to bounce back and they are going to show the Chargers what horsepower is. There's there's no charging against the for the Chargers. Their battery is still on the Charger and I think it's still going to be it's going to be there for the remainder of the season. 
So yeah, give me give me Denver. I agree with you. I'm taking Denver as well. And like you said, Russell Wilson did not look very good. Three total turnovers, you can't do that. But they only lost by five points. So let's not act like Denver got obliterated and they didn't get beat by a bad team. Sean Payton is a much better coach than Brandon Staley. Brandon Staley shouldn't be a coach in the NFL at all. So I'm going to talk about the Chargers, since I've already talked about the Broncos. <laughs> Chargering. Only the Chargers can make winning look bad. Because, Jesus God, they won 6-0 to with Justin Herbert, who is a top-five quarterback in the National Football League. No, he's not. I'll name five quarterbacks right now better than him. Patrick Mahomes. Josh Allen. I said Justin I, I, So, better than Joe Burrow. Lamar Jackson. I'll even say this. This one might surprise you. Dak Prescott. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. All, all better. Justin Herbert. Trevor Lawrence. I could go. I could, I could get going. I'm sure I'm forgetting some. That's off the top of my mind. So, you look. Again, Herbert is this generation's Tony Romo. He's on my fantasy team and did not help it at all last week. 212 passing yards, no touchdowns. I was still able to win, thank God, because I had Jamar Chase, the Rams running back Williams, and I also had Alvin Kamara on my fantasy team. So I had Taysom Hill, who looked good. So they made up for Herbert's failure. But you look, the Chargers, I'm not going to go into the rain I normally do, because had they lost to New England, I would say it, but I'm not going to. Because they did get the win. Yes, whatever. Winning is all that matters. But 6 nothing against New England? Come on. Charger fans, are you really happy with that? That's all I'll say. No. Give me the Broncos. Fire Brandon Staley. And I'm not even a Chargers fan and I'm saying that. Right. Yeah. Ooh, the game of the week. You ready for this game of the week? Oh, yeah. Philly at Dallas. Ooh. This one is a fairly tough one. Because, uh, to me, it can go either way. The way that the Dallas plays, is playing right now, and their defense, and I thought their defense was going to be a little bit horrible without uh, Trayvon Diggs. But I was wrong. Yeah, but I'm secondary wise. I thought they're going to be horrible, but I stand corrected. That Dallas Cowboys is, I think, I think that the secondary for the Dallas Cowboys is better without Trayvon Diggs. Uh, I wouldn't go that far. They're still good, but I won't go that far. I, 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 I say that I still go that far. Okay. But. I think this is where it's closely to the end of the season. I do because the Eagles did it last year. They slowed down. They slowed down a little bit. And I do believe they're still going to do the exact same thing. They're slowing down. So, yeah, give me give me Dallas. Ooh, OK, OK. I hear you. And we're different here. And I actually almost picked Dallas. And here's why. Not because I think they're better than Philly, because I do not think they're better than Philly. But oh, no. Look, oh, no. Philly, Philly has hit a brutal point of their schedule. Here's their last games. Ready? Mm-hmm. Cowboys, they beat them. They played the Chiefs, they beat them. They played the Bills, they beat them. And they played San Francisco and they lost. They have had a brutal four game stretch. Brutal. That's hard. And then they got Dallas again. That's rough. They're tired. Mm-hmm. And it's hot. It's hot. I think that's why they came out so flat against San Fran. I think San Fran would have won anyway. But the game would have been a lot closer had they not had that rough stretch. Me and you know, you play. we played football on a way lower level. But even on the high school level, if you play talented teams back to back to back, you're going to be hurting. Your body hurts. You're tired. You're sore. You're not getting the game prep throughout the week you need to get. You're just not because you're focused on how bad your body hurts. Yep. But with that, Dallas, I just don't trust them in big spots. Yeah, they finally beat their first team with a respectable record. And it was Seattle, 
who's kind of spiling themselves right now because they're out of the playoff picture and Green Bay's in it. So really, have they beat an elite team yet? They have not. No. And I just don't trust Dallas in big spots. I don't trust Dak in big spots like this. Dallas has already lost to Philly once. I think it'll happen again. And this time it's in Dallas. I think this is a toss-up game. I'm giving Philly the benefit of the doubt. They're better in close games. All right. Two Monday night football games this week. Which I don't like that. That's weird to me. But who do you got? The Tennessee Titans at the Miami Dolphins. I'm going to go with Miami. I mean, there's really not much to say with the with that game. Uh, Miami is also a powerhouse. Man, excuse me again. But yeah, Tua, he's he's looking like a really good quarterback. Uh, way better than Justin Herbert at this rate. Um, and plus There's that, another one. There's another one. That offense is is looking really good. And same thing with that defense. Uh, Jalen Ramsey has been back, and he has made a huge impact on for that defense. Absolutely. Even though Jalen Phillips is out of a uh, season-ending injury, which that sucked, Ooh, that sucks for him. Um, because I I did see that video of him getting hurt, and he was very emotional about it because he was he was doing really good, almost almost probably one of the candidates for it. Um, I would probably say a coming a coming up defensive player of the year. He he was playing that good. Um, for them to ha- for him to have a uh, career not career a season ending injury sucks, especially yeah. with his caliber and how he's been playing and and how he's so young. Um, but yeah, give me give me Miami. I absolutely agree with you. I have something here that says on my. On my, on my research here, that Derrick Henry, per my variable, did not have a concussion. They checked on him, but I have also seen reports he's in concussion protocol. So, again, big stream, sports media, contradicting themselves, whatever. Typical. But you look here either way. I mean, yeah, Derrick Henry had a really nice game. He almost has 900 yards rushing now. He had 102 rushing yards, two touchdowns. So Derrick Henry is Derrick Henry. He's going he's gonna to eat. But Miami is way too powerful. Tua, again, I love me my left-handed quarterbacks left handed myself. Play quarterback myself. So you look, 280 yards, two touchdowns. A chain at running back, 73 yards, two touchdowns. Tyreek Hill, who in my opinion is the league MVP this year to this point. Might be kind of a hard take because it's not a quarterback. But it's not a quarterback award as much as some people think it is. It's not. So, you look, they're way too powerful. Miami really likes to beat up on bad teams. Tennessee's a bad team. Their offense isn't going to be able to hold up. Tennessee isn't. Miami's going to score too many points. Give me the Dolphins. Mm-hmm. Ah, yes. Last but definitely not least, because it's the second Monday night game of the day, which I, I don't like that. But whatever. The Green Bay Packers at the New York Football Giants. Oh, and there's, like I said, there's no question about it. Uh, Green Bay Packers, hands down. There's no, there's nothing. Brian DeBull, DeBull, the duel. Dable, the tool, a fool. I think he. this is his last season or his last season in New York. I think he is not a good coach. Um, even though he did say that uh, Tommy DeVito is – Naming the starting, he will start week 14. Uh, Daniel Jones is not that guy. I still say they shouldn't have paid that man to begin with. Nope. They should have paid Barkley instead. Yep. I'll say that to my grave at this point in my life. Um, the Packers, it's going to get, the, once again, going to get the dub. It's going to be an easy dub. Don't say that because you're going to jinx it. Because I don't believe in easy dubs in the NFL. The Cardinals just upset the Steelers, which no one thought would happen. So upsets happen every week. But Green Bay is a young football team. They're high energy. We'll see the stats of Christian Watson. 
even if he doesn't play, Romeo Dobbs is playing good football. The Vivian Wicks, Jaden Reed's playing good. We'll see if Aaron Jones or Jair Alexander ever play again this season, but we won all three games without him, so I don't know, whatever. I mean, we, we beat the three really, really competitive teams. Well, two really competitive teams in the Chargers. But, I mean, the Giants, they have Tommy DeVito. They are coming off their bye week, which is whatever. But the Giants can't score. Green Bay's been able to put some points on the board these last few weeks. Unbiasedly, Rashawn Gary is one of the best pass rushers in the NFL. He has nine sacks. Had him a half a sack last game as well. So he, and of course, Thanksgiving, do have three sacks. So, I mean, he's an elite pass rusher. The Green Bay defense, I, I apologize to Joe Barry because he held Kansas City to under 20 points. Didn't think I'd be saying that today, but respect to Joe Barry, respect to that Packers defense. Quay Walker almost has 100 tackles on the year. He's a beast. I mean, I think Green Bay wins this game. I don't think it'll be close. I think it'll be a blowout. I'm not going to get too cocky. That's why I've kind of toned it down a little bit, because, I mean, anything can happen. But, I mean, I have no reason to pick the Giants. Give me the pack. We go on to the playoffs this year, baby. Mm-hmm. I agree. So with that, teams on by this week, this is the last week for bye weeks, are the Arizona Cardinals and the Washington Commanders. So there will be no talking of taking command this week, unfortunately. So this is the last week for bye weeks. Things are starting to clear up in the NFL. As you can see above our heads here, JB is 118-75 and 75 on the year. I am 127-66. and 66. I told JB that him... Picking the Green Green Bay last week, brotherly love, we gotta do it. But so that there is our records. It's, it's closer than it looks. I mean, we almost have 200 games predicted, and there's only a nine-game difference. Still, plenty of football to be played. So mm-hmm. we'll see if JB can get some catching, get some catching up to do. However, me and JB, as always, are going to go to our subtopic here and talk the world of college football. Right, JB. Out of the four teams in the playoffs this year, Alabama, Texas, Washington, and Michigan, no particular order there listed, who do you have lifting the trophy at the end of the year? Well. Oh, this one. You have one minute. Go. Sorry. It's go- this one's going to be a really tough one because – do believe it's going to be probably yeah this is going to be a tough one though but give me the roll tide Alabama it's it's just for the it's just the fact that they're number one in the SEC and the reason why we we all know why because that team is all is stacked and always will be stacked. Um, but yeah, Just roll tie. There's there's really nothing nothing for it. I so, mean, yeah, Alabama's been there before. My minute starts now. Go. So yeah, Alabama's been there before, but Florida State should be in there. Hundred percent. Too much about that. I've, I've already talked about that in my. And my short take also, a thank you all for commenting. I commented back. I appreciate the good sports talk there. However, so Florida State should be in there. They were undefeated. Texas was not. Alabama was not. They all won their conference championship. The panel just cannot allow the SEC to have a bad year. The SEC is, oh, it frustrates me. It's overrated conference. That's all mm-hmm. I'll leave that there. But that to the teams that are actually in it, I think, unfortunately, Michigan will win. Michigan had a lot of adversity this year. Their head coach, they had a lot of talk outside the locker room, a lot of big media talk, distractions. They didn't have their coach for Ohio State game. Their coach is back now. Harbaugh's back. I think Michigan, they've shown that they can win in not the best circumstances, not the most ideal circumstances. I think because of the adversity they've faced, they'll be able to kind of pull it together against these harder teams. Give me the Wolverines. I, I hate Michigan. So much. I hope Texas wins. I hope Texas wins. I want to say, if I, I am rooting for Texas, but I do not think they'll win. I think the Wolverines will. Right. I hate Alabama. Oh, I hate Alabama. I hate the SEC. I hate it. Overrated. 
I mean, I, I do hate him, but I hate him too. But it's just Alabama is, is Alabama. I Even though I do believe they... I don't think Alabama really should be in it. I don't either. I absolutely don't. I think Flor- it. Florida State should be should have been the one in it, it's just because one, make it right for all teams. If you're undefeated, you should be in. Let the kids be rewarded to what their accomplishment for this season. Yes. And the stats here show it. Texas lost a game. Alabama lost a game. Yeah, Washington and Michigan didn't, so they're automatic. Mm-hmm. But you're telling me you're going to leave an undefeated team out? And mind you, yeah, the college panel said it's because Travis, their quarterback, got injured. Well, that's my point. My point is this. They still won the last bit of their games without their starting quarterback, and that's hard to do. That alone should get them in, not yep. keep them out. It's because yeah, it's... they cannot do it. They have to have an SEC team in there every year, and it's bullcrap. I do. I agree. But yeah, it's just for the fact. It's also for the fact that the the board and the NCAA thinks it's a business. It is not a business. It is college. So most of these kids will never see an NFL. That is a business. That is business because it is a job. It is a career. You do not make a career out of a college football player. You're there for four or five years. That is it. That to me, that is not a career. You are a student. It is student is not a business. Let the kids play. Absolutely. And I am happy about this. I'll give the NCAA this. This is where I'll leave mine for the podcast. Next year, the playoff expands to 12 teams. So this crap we're talking about now won't have to happen anymore. So I'm tired of seeing these teams deserve to get in, not get in for teams that have already lost games. I'm tired of seeing it. So this will be the last year for that. Thank goodness. I hope so. And as always, that's all we have for today's Unbiased Hard Take. JB, anything else you want to talk about? Nothing really, other than the NCAA is full of crap. Um, they should not think make it as a business. Um, it's it is what it is, I guess. Um, don't forget to like us on Facebook, subscribe. It is free. We, you know, everyone loves free stuff. You like the comedy nowadays. Um, it's free. Um, it helps us out. It will help you out. Um, comment, subscribe. Comment on anything you 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 like to talk about. What do you, do you think the NCAA, how they're treating uh, these kids, these students, um, and how how good is your team? How good how good is your team doing in the NFL? Uh, comment down below. See what what we think. Uh, but that's all I have. And also, don't forget to check out Sports Fact today. Today, Matt before 16 and 0 in December. That's today's Sports Fact today. Go check out our Facebook as well. Uh, we're, we're, we're posting Sunday updates. We post college updates. We, we were getting a lot more active on Facebook. So don't be afraid to check that out and let us know how we're doing there as well. JB's getting involved as well. Check out his Steelers recap that he posts on Facebook. Check out what we're doing on both YouTube and Facebook. I agree. But yeah, that's all we have for today. And go Steelers and go Heat. And go Pat Go. And let's go Heat. See you next time. Thank you.